get more sports with less on More Sports Channel and Les Levine. I was out one day. I've got brain lock. I forgot how to do the show. Good evening, everyone. We're in the middle of the week. More Sports Channel than Les Levine. My name is Les Levine. And uh, Rick Manning, who pretended to be Les Levine for, uh, for a promo. Uh, Hef, are you uh, with us tonight? Yes, I am. Did that win any uh, Cable Ace Awards, that promo we did? Not yet, but it's actually qualified for next season's awards. Is that so, right? Yeah. Is that right? All right. It has to be retired for five years like the Hall of Fame? That's right. All That's right. right. How you doing? I missed you guys uh, last night. We missed night. you. We, we, we saw you, though. You called a pretty good game. I am. Uh, I mean, not you called a pretty good game. <laughs> call. I'm wearing my CSU uh, shill shirt because the Vikings uh, really uh, were impressive and have been impressive all season long uh, against Michigan State last night. And After those few practices we saw, are you surprised? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. absolutely. Right. I, although they've got to work on their foul shot defense. Uh, How do you, what are you going to do? 26 out of 27 for, uh, for Michigan State in the second half. That was, uh, that was incredible. How about this? It it's ties in with our question of the week on, on email. Uh, and you can reach us on email at lesstalk at sportschannel.com. That's lesstalk at sportschannel.com. And it has to do with what do you like better in the NBA and college basketball? Do you like higher scoring or lower scoring and why? And is if on cue, the Cavaliers defeated... The Orlando Magic tonight, 84 to 57, and that's a final, right? Yes, sir. 84 to 57, and they and they charge 50, 7,500 bucks a seat for that. I, I've got a big problem. Hey, with I got to tell you, this is a true story. Last night, for the first half, anyway, I, I took my folks down to the garden to see the Raptors. Yes. Play. Guy two rows in front of us, I had pretty good seats through the Raptors office, and this guy's trying wait, to. Wait, 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 wait! You can't get him through the Cavs office. You oh, got him through the Raptors I could, office. I but. This is how we got. Anyway, okay. guy wants to step over that little railing that separates the regular seats from floor seating. And the ushers tell him, sir, you can't do that. You can't do that. The guy looks at the usher and says, I'm trying to conclude a business transaction here, and you're going to stop me? In the middle of the game? Yep. True story. Perfect. Anyway, here, I got a Karnak to go with it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add. I don't have the envelope. Ready? Sure. 84-57. 84-57. What will the Indians' record be <laughs> after 141 games? 57 points in an NBA basketball game? Great defense. Right? I mean, I guess you'd have to say that. I don't know. They're now known as the Heinz uh, 57 variety. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyway, on email, uh, Rick Manning will be with us when we get back from our break. Uh, email stuff that's come in while I was going. By the way, thanks to Ronnie B. Ronnie Brynas last night who, who filled in for me. I, I uh, have not brought myself up to, to watch the tape yet. It, it would be like Wally Pipp watching Lou Gehrig. Uh, so I'm not sure I want to do that. Well, but he, he did all right? He did fine. Is he in tomorrow night? He did fine. <laughs> anyway, this email comes in from Jack, and he says, uh, if you've not read the Hal Lebovitz article in the Monday Lake County News Herald, read it. Bill Futterer and the NFL are trying to sell the idea that you need to make a financial commitment to prove your loyalty to the Browns, something that we, if anyone, should not have to prove. Uh, if it does happen, it will invite corporate America to fill the stands the way it has in the NBA. As of uh, this year, I do not attend the Cavs games because of the nature of the crowd and the price of the tickets. I was given a loge seat on Saturday, and with a five-point Orlando lead, you couldn't hear a peep. The other people in the, lo in the loge knew nothing about basketball. They were more concerned with the dessert tray. I agree with that guy. A couple of how-come quickies on email. Hef, are you with me or not? Yes, I'm always with you. Uh, you never know. Sometimes it looks like you're uh, bailing out on me. What? what do I look like? A couple of quickies. Ready for this? <laughs> yes. How come they call them fingers, but they don't fing? How come you don't take calls for the 4 o'clock show? Well, there's the, there's the problem. No, we're not doing that, by the way. That thing you just showed me, it's done for a while. Uh, <laughs> how, <laughs> how come the guy who always calls you handsome, are you worried? No, I'm actually worried that he calls at all. I don't care what he calls me. How come St. Ignatius finally lost a state championship? Dear Les, I uh, love your takeoff on the Masterpiece Theater for your quickie merchandise. Jolly good. Ugly or cute? I vote for cute. Of all the emails I've ever sent, this was the most recent. From uh, our friend Sherry down in Massillon. Ah, Sherry. Ah, Sher ah Sherry. Sherry. Or Chardonnay. Or anything else. All right, uh, we have Hungry... Did anybody get the Hungry... Ho did anybody get the uh, Boy Sherman word of the day yesterday? No. We're up to day 11. I can't believe this is the easiest word that we've ever had. And we wanted to give the pizza away last night. But? But Ronnie B. just ripped right through it, just kept rambling. Why? 
got him on a couple soap boxes, and uh, we couldn't get him. And off. he said, "The heck with Hungry Howie." You know, it was funny. Before the show, My friend, Hungry Howie. Hey, before the show, he's going, "Guys, you know, help me out. You know, I'm going to need some help tonight." Yeah. Once he got going, man, it was like a train. You couldn't <laughs> stop him. Why don't you just let him keep doing the show to about midnight and don't tell him he That's was right. off? We all go home. All right. Uh, if you uh, say the. Uh, uh, the secret word will send you 11 cigars from the Cousin Cigar Company at 18th and Euclid, as well as uh, on Chagrin Boulevard across from the Eaton Collection with the largest selection of the precious cigars from all over the world. There you go, Boy Sherman. Uh, David Modell is there to welcome in uh, Cousin Cigar. And also, if you do say thanks, Howie, when Howie Chizik tells us we've got two minutes remaining in this segment, if you say thanks, Howie, we, because of your politeness, we will send you a Hungry Howie's Pizza from uh, Lakewood. 228-8300. Well, come on back, Rick. Rick Manning joins us in studio. Hef, I have a question. Yes? Rick is the only guy we've ever had who's been on time. Do you suppose he's now left because he's been here long enough? Yes. Well, we'll find out if Rick Manning shows up in a moment live on Sports Channel. Sports Channel proudly and carefully presents more Sports Channel and Les Levine. Welcome back. More Sports Channel and Les Levine. We're here till 11 unless you're watching this on Thursday, so we're here till 5. I, don't, I haven't figured that out yet. Uh, it's the new math. I have to come in here tomorrow again. And wear the same clothes and it's say the same thing. Absolutely incredible. It's hard. 84, 57. What's happening to Sounds the, like the, this is a good segue. What's yeah. happening to the integrity of the game? Integ sp <laughs> Speaking of the integrity of the game. Did you hear that quote by Art Modell, yes. Boy Sherman's father? Yes. Did you hear what he said? He got John Stark, who nobody's ever heard of, from uh, that fabulous football uh, factory, Trinity. Hell of, a, hell of a point, hell of a shooting guard, though. Right. John St yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Um, he uh, apparently is in, in problems for uh, having, uh, having some uh, ties with gambling. And, uh, of course, you can't tie with gambling if you're getting three and a half points. That's why they give the... Finish the story. Anyway, so uh, they're checking on him, and Art won't let him back in the complex because it ruins the integrity of the game. Art Modell says that John Stark is ruining the integrity of the game. 21,000 people in New Orleans last week, 26,000 at the New York Jets. We have more people in our studio audience watching, watching the show. And with uh, no further ado, we bring in Rick Manning, who... Well, they're packed tonight, Les. I know <laughs> who, that. Who are all these people, and did they buy PSLs? I brought them all with me. <laughs> um, you pre pretended to be Les Levine for a while, so I have a whole bunch of bills sitting on my kitchen table. My name is Les Levine, but I don't know if the signature is the same. <laughs> that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. How are you? I'm doing fine. You having withdrawal from the 96 season, ready for 97? Yeah, I think I'm ready to get it going. Yeah. I've had enough time off. It's uh, baseball time again, plus the weather is, I mean, it's not even winter yet. and We've already had four feet of snow. Um, it's time to get started. When, when you played ball, though, at this time of the year when you just went through a, a year where you won... Um, 63 games maybe, um, and, and lost in the in the 90s or whatever that would be. Did never you lost say, 100. Never lost 100. Uh, there was a strike year in there too, though. You <laughs> would have. We were we were good that <laughs> year. Yes, you were. Um, did you ever say, oh, it's a, it's a, it's it's only December. I need three years off. I mean, yeah. right now you're chopping at the bit, but sometimes you wouldn't want that. You know, as a matter of fact, there were times in December where you were just starting to unwind yeah. after that long grind of traveling and things like that, and. You were hoping that trades were made to, to build your uh, yeah. team for next year. Uh, when February rolled around, there was times you were saying, geez, give me a couple more months. Yeah. We'll show yeah. up in June. Yeah, we, i got to win another 60 games this next <laughs> year. We had your buddy uh, Dwayne Kuyper on a couple of weeks ago. And I've been a fan of the Indians. I mean, the first game I ever went to, I think, was 1951. So I've, I've suffered a lot of years. Yes, you have. And we had Kuyper on it, and, and we talked about it that, and as a fan, every year I figured, okay, this will be the year. It's all going to come together. I don't care who we have. You know, Chico Simone, uh, Jack Kralik, whoever. These guys, you know, Kralik will win the Cy Young, and, and, and all that's going to happen. And the version of, you had a bunch of young guys that came up together, but going back into the 60s, you had uh, Al Luplo coming in with Tony Martinez and Vic D'Avalio. So, oh, if, all th if only two of the three are yeah. all-stars, wouldn't that be great? But you had the good pitching back in the Did, 60s. Yeah, but... but then you didn't have good hitting, and then when you had right. good hitting, you didn't have good pitching. And I guess the point I'm saying as a fan, and I, I, I don't mean this anything personal to you because you... I've heard it before, Les. Okay, <laughs> all right. A as a fan, you'd say uh, if everything goes right, um, it'll, it'll, it'll come together and they'll win. And then you look back and you say, you know, we really didn't have a chance against Boston and New York and all that. And as That's a player, right. did you... 
you know, you go into spring training and you say, boy, if, if I hit 307 and this guy does this and, and we're going to win. But when you look back in reality, when you see what the Yankees had and you see what Boston and, and, and all those teams, you really didn't have a chance on paper. I'll tell you what, it didn't matter. As a player, went to spring training every year. If, if I felt differently, I wouldn't have gone. Right. You went where you felt you had an opportunity to win right. or at least contend. Regardless of the players you had, they would always make a few moves. You know, when you go out on the press tour and you And every promote. move looked great, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, every move does look great because, oh, man, it's a new guy. It's someone coming from somewhere else, and you were hoping it would turn around. And I swear, if I would have known now what I known back then, I wouldn't have shown up for yeah. a couple of spring trainings. Yeah, I mean, you the, see it from a different angle. You now. know, the funny thing of it is um, the ownership is what we're all talking about. Right. You know, we could not survive. We but did we, not as, have but people as fans, dedicated. We didn't know that. That's true. I mean, we knew it, but it, we didn't think it mattered. We figured you put the players out. doesn't matter if they can't have six minor league teams or two minor league teams. It didn't matter to us as they, fans. They always tried. And, and I will say this. The players, a, a good majority of the people that I played with, and Kipe will, will say the same thing, you always felt you had the opportunity to win. We were just cheated. I mean, you look at the American League East back then, that was by far the best division in all of baseball right. when you had the Yankees, the Red sure. Sox, the Orioles, the Tigers at times were good. I mean, Toronto first started, and then they even came on and, right. and were very good. So um, the, we just could not compete. We had some great players. We had some good pitching stats. When they unloaded the pitchers, we had uh, good offenses. But we just never put everything together at once because they did not have the money to generate to right. keep them here in Cleveland. But as a player, you didn't – I mean, you still played one through nine innings and played oh, your heart out and ran through walls and did we all that We would play stuff. in April when it was freezing, and, I mean, we could be 30 games out by All-Star break. Right. And I'll tell you what, there would be guys that would take a day off, and you'd be a little upset with them because, hey, man, this is September. You still go out and you fight for it. That's right. what we used to call salary drive. Sure. Where you had to go out there and you busted your butt until, until the season was over. You'll have five months to rest when it's over with. Yeah. And that's the way we approached it. I mean, we looked no differently, and, and we took pride in what we did. We'd go in, we'd play teams tough. About the seventh inning, a close call would go one way or the other, would always go the other way, and we just never had enough talent yeah. to survive. A couple of things stick out uh, to me. Number one, you were as, as, you got as quick a jump off the ball as, as anybody in that era. Um, Paul did, Blair was the only guy I think that might have been better. Yeah, and he probably, play, he probably played 20 feet in, in uh, closer to a second base. A little bit base. than me, right. Yeah, but um, did you know you were that quick? I mean... You know, you always say about picturing where the ball will be and all that stuff. Were you able to do that? I don't know if it's a, a God-gifted talent or what. I always played up the middle. I was drafted as a shortstop. Right. We were talking earlier about that. And um, when I went to center field, that's where I felt comfortable playing. You know, the, I think the biggest fear an outfielder has is having a ball hit over his head. Because how many times will you go to a ballpark and you'll see a player turn and look for the, the fence? Right. He's afraid a ball's going to get hit over his head. Well, if that happens, I used to say that's the pitcher's fault for letting him hit it that right. far. I would take more base hits away from guys um, in short center field than balls would be hit over my head. Right. Now, if I had guys on my left and my right that could play, which a lot of times I did not, that were good defensive players, oh, God, there's no, te oh, there's no yeah. telling how good you could be. A couple of things stick out in, in, in your career to me. Uh, obviously, the one, the picture in any uh, Cleveland Indian fan's mind was uh, you, you making the catch for the final out in, in, in Len Barker's uh, perfect game. In reality, a routine play, but it's one right. that's, that's etched in memories. I say routine. D did you have time to think of all the bad things that could have happened as it's coming down? Well, I'll tell you, as a, a perfect game goes, that's the only one I've ever played in. There's only been about 15 or yeah. 16, but I've been in three no-hitters. Really? Uh, who, who else? Oh, uh, Bosnia, Eckersley. Uh, Eckersley. Eckersley was yeah. here in 77. Against, and against I would, California. Yeah, when I was in Milwaukee, Juan Nieves threw one against Baltimore okay. Royals in 1987. All right. um, you, you feel a the game going, you know, as it, as it gets into about the seventh inning, you start to realize, hey, no matter where this ball is hit, you've got to get after it. Right. Well, Barker was just, in his perfect game, getting stronger and stronger right. and stronger as the game went along. He didn't have a strikeout till the fourth. He ended up with 11. So, yeah, before that ball was hit, I was saying, hit me the ball because okay. I know it'll be a My perfect next question. Game. I want My, the baseball. Okay, you weren't saying. It could have been hey, in left field. I was calling You're not saying, off. hey, there's seven other guys oh, out here. No let, him, let him. No, and I'm, I'm sure if you ask Kuiper the same thing who was yeah. in that game, he would have said, hit me the baseball. Right. I want it. Hargrove, who was at first base, would say, hit me the baseball. I want it. Hera, who was at third base, would say, hit me the baseball. That's just the way it is defensively. You, know, you, don't, you don't talk to the pitcher during the during You the know no what hitter. the funny thing is? Um, I know I did to Lenny, and I know Barker did, because as the game was going on, Lenny was sitting down on the, you know, the end of the bench, and he wasn't that type of pitcher where you couldn't say anything. He'd walk in to get ready for his game. You could talk to him like a normal right. player every right. day. He just had that mentality. 
Well, you could see he was sitting down and everybody staying away from him on the other side of the bench. I walked out going out before the ninth inning. I said, come on, big boy, you can do it. Right. Toby Harris said something to him, but everybody else just stayed okay. away. All right, so normally you don't talk to the pitcher. Are you talking among yourselves? Oh, yourself? Well, yeah, you know, you know it. I mean, when you're out there, you just feel it. You yeah. don't have to. I mean, uh, middle infielders say, okay, whatever it takes, man. Flip, yeah. dive, give me the ball. And right. I'd say to the outfielders, let's go, call and communicate. Yeah. You're in, you're in touch to what's happening. All right. got to take a break. Rick Manning is with us. We'll come on back and talk to him. We'll go to your calls in a moment. You're watching more Sports Channel and Les Levine. Opinions expressed on more Sports Channel and Les Levine are not necessarily those of Sports Channel, Classic Worldwide Productions, or its sponsors. We cannot stop him from hanging up on callers. We cannot force him to take calls from listeners under 16 years old. We can't even stop him from being Cleveland's most loved and hated sports talker. But we can force him to be the most entertaining sports talk show host in Cleveland. Ladies and gentlemen, it's more Sports Channel and Les Levine. Oh, by the way, a couple of days ago, we told you about the Dick Ambrose who was in studio last week, and he sent us a nice note. And he said that uh, the legends of, of the game, the former Browns players, if you'd like to reach any of them and have them for an outing or uh, some kind of uh, event, you can call uh, area 216-729-9515, 729-9515, and talk to the uh, uh, representative for the former Browns, and, and they will work it out. Uh, Half, how many segments do we have in a normal show here? Uh, normally five or six. Five or six. So if we're through four, for example, and everything's going great, oh, so sort of a perfect show. We'll probably all stop talking to you. All right. So except, except Rick will lean forward and say, come on, big boy. <laughs> I know you can do it. Do you guys get nervous up in the booth if we're perfect through four? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Talk hey, we can invite those Brown legends to our, uh, we might as well start talking about it, our New Year's Eve special. Let, let's invite uh, Rick to our New Year's Eve Season special now. Yep. All right. When is that? Well, New, New Year's, Year's Eve, Eve, it's going to be on the 31st this year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. I thought it was New Year's all right, Day. All right. This is a secret to the audience out here. We're probably doing a New Year's Eve party. It's going to be taped prior to then, so don't call. We're going to come in here. We're going to have a party in here sometime. We'll get everybody together, all the guests that we've had, all the guests that we've liked. Right. Can you think, who won't be on that list? I'm not privy to that. Mark, Mike Hargrove will not be here. I'm not privy to that Because he sniffed list. us that night. Are you hearing me? Next time. Yeah, I did. Okay. I'm ignoring you. <laughs> anyway, we'll have the people from Thistledown, and you can make a child's holiday even happier by contributing to the no Toys for uh, Tots campaign, sponsored by the Marine Corps. Uh, from now through Saturday, December 14th, Thistledown Racetrack will hold their annual Toys for Tots campaign. Bring in a new toy with a min minimum value of 5 bucks, and you'll receive a uh, Thistledown track pack. It'll give you free admission, free program, as well as a free box seat, free parking good any day uh, during the remaining 1996 live racing season at Thistledown. Rick Manning is with us. And, Rick, uh, another memory that I have of you, and I think I told you this on one of your broadcasts, that this is kind of a bad memory, that you got booed for hitting the game-winning hit. Yeah. <laughs> You're playing with Milwaukee, right? That's and right. Against, against the Indians. The Indians. And, right. but, yeah, we had John Farrell on the other day talking to you because he pitched that day. He started that ball game. Right. Molitor's got, what, 39 games straight. 39 and hitting straight. Was this the bottom of the ninth or bottom of the tenth? Bottom of the tenth. Okay, so Molitor's on deck, and you got a guy on base, and you get a hit, and uh, you, you win the game. It was a terrific ball game. It was uh, nothing, nothing. John Farrell pitched the first nine innings, okay? And he was matched up against Teddy Higuera, who had a terrific year that year, won, uh, I think, 20 ball games. Well, going into that game, he had a shutout string um, stretched to about 33 consecutive innings. Right. After nine. Um, tenth inning comes, he shuts them down. They bring in Doug Jones. Well, you know, at that time of my career, I wasn't playing a whole lot. I was pinch hitting and filling in for guys. All of a sudden, we're at the bottom part of the lineup. We got guys on first and second base. And Treblehorn was a manager and says, Archie, grab a bat. I says, okay, you want me to get a hit, right? He says, yeah, let's end this ball game. Well, of course, I'm going to try and do that. It was the ninth place hitter, Juan Castillo or something like that. I go up, Doug Jones. I'm looking for a change up away anyway. Throws me a fastball inside, strike one. And we're in Milwaukee, and all of a sudden the fans start cheering. I step out and I look down at my <laughs> uniform. I says, Wait Cleveland. a minute, what team am I playing for here? Now I've been in this spot before. I says, They want me to make an out. I says, Those son of a guns. And it, it sort of fired me up. Right. Next pitch, looking for the change up away. 
Normally, I hit it right to the shortstop and ground into a double play and end the inning. This time, Julio's playing short. I get it by him. We got Mike Felder on second, comes around to score. Molitor's on deck. The fans were, like, shocked. I touch first base. They start booing. We win the game one nothing, and Molitor's the first one to meet me to say congratulations. And he said, "You think he meant it?" Uh, absolutely. He said, "Thank God it's over." Because yeah. I mean, if you watch it build up, and that's the longest hitting streak since that point. Right. Um, a phenomenal run. I've never seen a guy that hot and that good for so long. Um, to you, this day, still a good hitter. You know, the amazing thing on uh, on Dimaggio's streak to me is he has the fifty six in a row. Gets stopped on two great plays by Ken Keller. Comes back with 18 straight exactly, after that. Exactly, exactly. I mean, that's, I think, one um, record that may never be broken because of what goes into it with the media now, the buildup of something like right. that. Hitting in the in consecutive games, very, very difficult nowadays. Yeah, now with, with all the sports, with Sports Channel and ESPN and everything else, they'd hound people. Oh, God. I mean, he was having, like, Nightline and people. He had to set press yeah. conferences up prior to that just to get rid of it before right. the game. Right, right. Uh, Hill, this will bring you some great memories. This is behind yeah. you at the stadium. As long as it's not on fire. <laughs> <laughs> a fire sale at the stadium That's yesterday. Right. Yeah, Section 23 is on the fire sale. I'll, I'll take two. Anyway, you can get these stadium memories. I don't know what, what memories Rick has of the stadium. It's the authentic piece of sports history, and you can call 1-800-917-DOG, D-A-W-G. I mean, Rick Manning was in front of the dog pound before it was ever called the dog pound. I have great memories of the stadium. I'll tell you what, uh, the you walk into a, a stadium that big. I was 20 years old, my first game in the big leagues. And, I mean, you just look around, yeah. and it's very, very intimidating. But I tell you, it, it was great to play there. It was a great place to play defense. You could run into the walls. They were soft, and you never got hurt. Right. It was a little tougher place to hit because the Bozzards would groom it for guys like Gaylord Perry and let the grass sure. grow and tilt the foul lines and things like that. Now, now, when you played in center field, though, and I've been on that field, it was tilted, wasn't it? It was a crown, yeah. But uh, I'll tell you, the toughest thing about that field in the springtime uh, and going into the fall when the Browns started playing on, it was always wet and it right. was always uneven. And I'll tell you, your feet and ankles, uh, we always used to have to take them up. boots out there. Yeah, sometimes yeah. we did with nails coming out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can call uh, uh, that special introductory price of $89. Call 1-800-917-DOG or on the Internet uh, at www.doggone.com. I think I got it. Rick Manning is, is with us. Rick now, of course, uh, one of the fine voices of the Indians on Sports Channel. How, how are you enjoying that? I love it. It's the next best thing to playing as far as I'm concerned. I'll be starting my eighth year, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, eighth full season at wow. Sports Channel. And uh, we started in 89 where they started in August, I think you'll remember, 11 games. Um, and I've been the only color man for who, Sports Channel. Who was Channel. Uh, doing the play-by-play -play then? Uh, about six or seven other yeah, guys. Yeah, we who? had Nev Chandler. We had uh, Jimmy Donovan. We had Casey Coleman. Right. I had Joe Tate. I had uh, Denny Schreiner. Whoever they could find at that sure. time of the year. So it was a cast of a thousand. They never called me, Hef. I think you were out of town every time they tried. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. But at that time, um, I didn't know what I was doing. I had just gotten right. out of baseball. 87 was my last year. I sort of took a year off. And was very fortunate to get in to this market because uh, they were looking for a color man and I happened to live in the Cleveland area. Yeah. Hey, remember Selected Memory Day? Yes. Think about this. With all the teams that I've folded, yes. think of the history involved here and how this would have all changed. That if they called me eight years ago to do an Indians game, number one, the, the vote would have gone down for uh, the syntax. Yes. Right? Yes. Dick Jacobs would have moved the team to Sarasota, St. Pete, True. or to, to Tampa, St. Pete, True. right? The Browns would not, not be here anymore. Right. Think of this sports town. If they had called me eight and a half years ago, <laughs> I fold, that would have been the fourth team I would have folded. <laughs> Rick Manning's with us, and our lines are Jan. We'll get, uh, get to your calls in a moment, live on Sports Channel. Now, here's the man Cleveland Magazine has named Sports Talk Show Host of the Year. But he's still just as humble as always. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one, the only, the greatest, Les Levine. All right, welcome back. More Sports Channel and Les Levine. Uh, Rick, when you, have a, when you were playing ball and you had a bad night, would you blame it on the bat boy? Any, yeah, anybody but yourself. Yeah, blame we, it on whoever. We blame the cameraman. That's a good choice. Camera. Speaking of Cleveland Magazine, uh, we, made it, we made it this week or this month. We're going to show it uh, to Rick. Now, this is Best of Cleveland, Rick, and 
I made it as the, uh, the best bounce back. Now, you know what that means? <laughs> that means I must have been way down, way down to make a bounce back. It doesn't matter. As long as you bounce back. They have a it, Comeback Player of the Year award. you got a bounce comeback back Comeback Player award. of the Year means the year before you were terrible. I've always said, if you want to be the worst, be the best of the worst. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, you'll never get a bad meal if you go out to uh, Alfonso's. Who do we have, Dave or Cindy tonight? Dave. Da sounds like Dave. Does not sound like Cindy. How no. are you, Dave? Hi, right, Les. How you doing? What's going on? Let's see. Tonight, uh, I missed uh, all the pasta you could eat last night. Yeah, well, you did, but there was a lot of people that didn't. Terrific. That's yeah, We had a big line standing outside, so it was great. Uh, nobody goes there. There's too, uh, too big a line. Oh, come on. <laughs> so Yogi Berra, 1953. Uh, Dave uh, is out at Alfonso's along with Cindy at West 130th and Sprague. It is a great uh, great place to go for pizza or for any Italian uh, meal. What's on special coming up this weekend, Dave? Well, we got a new chicken dish, Les. It's really, really very good. It's a lightly breaded, uh, boneless breast of chicken uh, with uh, red and green peppers, mushrooms, and onions, and it's uh, sautéed and... Uh, you know, white wine butter sauce. Don't do this to uh, me. Well, please come out and try it. But please don't close us down now, okay? No, I, yeah. <laughs> now that I'm your spokesman, I wouldn't want to close you down. Oh, please don't. No, I haven't done that to any restaurants yet, but I'm looking forward to the first one. Uh, oh, don't. I nailed a radio station went under. You know, I'm good at this stuff. Oh, God. I was on the Titanic. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. All right. Hey, Dave, give me that phone number for takeout orders. 845-9610. 845-9610, of course, at West 130th and Sprague, right in the middle of four great communities where they all come together. Say hi to Cindy for me, okay? All right, Les, thanks again. to send a car over here for, with some for us. Yeah, they brought, the, uh, when Mike Fratello was on, they brought all the Italian food, and Mike wouldn't talk. All he did was eat the whole time. Hey, they can cater the, the New Year's Eve party. Maybe they will. We'll talk to them about it. Uh, also part of more cuisine and Les Levine, uh, Doc and Louie's, uh, after four years downtown, they've also expanded to a second location on Lorraine Road, just a mile east of uh, the Great Northern Mall. Both locations feature great food at great prices, including wings, salads, sandwiches, and the famous Doc Burger. And more important uh, than that is the fact that Phone Boy Dennis hangs out there. Um, and, and what a treat that is for anybody who would see Phone Boy Dennis. While you're eating. While you're eating. And Elsner's Steakhouse on uh, Chagrin Boulevard. I think it's the best steak in town, located at Chagrin, where uh, Northfield, Warrensville, and uh, Van Aken all come together. Call Allen at 752-6700. Rick Manning is with us. Rick, have you ever talked to the Blender Lady? No, I have not. Blender Lady, how are you? Les. Yes. I'm still wired from last night's show with Ronnie B. You're still wired? Oh, my gosh. He was hot. <laughs> what do you mean he was hot? He just hot? kept going. What do you mean he was hot? He was hot looking? No, no. I mean, he was just on one tirade after. Did you ever watch Saturday Night Live, um, the Joe Pesci show? I watched Saturday Night Live when it was good, sure, 10, 15 well, years ago. they have a segment called the Joe Pesci show where he starts beating up on, and I thought for sure he was just going to get Frank Derry, you know, if he crossed him at any point. Right. That would have been the end of it. But anyway, how come you discriminate against espresso and cappuccino drinkers? You don't sell the, the cups for us to drink coffee, only mugs. These mugs? Yeah, they're too big for espresso or cappuccino. If so fill it halfway. Halfway of that? And pay six bucks you instead of 12 for the mug. Eight. Anyway, do you think that Alex Fernandez is going to be the answer to the pitching problems of the Cleveland Indians? You're asking me or, or the guy who Rick. really knows? Rick. I certainly think he can help. I don't think he's going to be uh, a solve-all. They could certainly use a starter, and if they do not get a Fernandez, you would like to see him get somebody like a Roger Clemens. Um, but they could definitely use another starter to go into that rotation. And, you know, they're very limited when you look at free agents this year, and he's obviously the top now. What happened with Clemens? Not, well, they're still negotiating with him. And, you know, I think his allegiance may be to Boston. He's been there uh, his whole career, and – it's tough to get guys that have spent that much time in one town away, in especially Boston, if they want to pay the dollars. Well, that's right. In Boston, needs, for PR reasons, they need Well, sure. Uh, if they let that guy go, they'll, they'll kill him, and their pitching staff is terrible anyway. Let's go to Paul in uh, Talmadge. Hi, Paul. How are you doing, Les? Good. How are you? Good. Great show. Tonight? Every night. Thank especially you. last night. Especially last <laughs> night when I wasn't here. No, because of Ronnie B, man. He's the best. He's the best. Okay. I got a couple questions. Go ahead. One is, um, is it going to be hard to get rid of Lofton if we have to? Because he's going to be asking for so much money. What do you mean get rid year? of him? You mean to trade him? To trade him. They can't trade him. Nobody's going to take him because they'd, he'd walk out on them at the end of the year, well, too. that's what I'm saying. I mean, if we had to trade him, is, are we going to be able to? No. I mean, you wouldn't get anything for him. Well, well that's what I thought. But second I mean, question. Wait, wait, hold on a second. If you had a chance to get a great free agent, 
from another team, or a great player from another team, and this was the only year he had on the contract. Would you give up a whole bunch of great things to get him? I wouldn't. Well, um, yeah, but maybe you had a chance to, you'd have a chance to get him in that next year. They have in a the chance. Second to, year, if, maybe hold you on, might sir. Have a chance. Sir, they're called free agents. Do you understand what that means? Oh, yeah, I know. Anybody, anybody can get them, okay? Just because they're on your team doesn't give you the inside track. Remember Albert Bell? He was on the Indians. Steve's in Parma. Hi, Steve. Yeah, how you doing? Good. Bring some class to this program. Okay. Uh, Two-part question, one for you and one for Mr. Manning. First one to you. What kind of numbers were they less talking? Less than two minutes to go in the segment. Yeah, thanks, Howie. All right, you're a winner of a Hungry Howie's Pizza, 228-8300. What's Super. up? Okay, uh, number one. To you, what kind of numbers, if you know any, are they talking about to Alex Fernandez? Number two, to Mr. Manning, during your tenure with the Indians, um, why were you a stiff? <laughs> Should we give him a pizza? I'm not giving him a no, pizza. Sure no, sure he can. He was those not, guys that used to come down and boo me. That's fine. No, he I'm deserves not a, a pizza. No, I'm not giving him a pizza. Just make it cold. Don't put any pepperoni <laughs> on it. Uh, numbers, I'm, I, I hear seven and a half million. I would say you're going to look in that range, seven, seven million dollars, um, you know, give or take, depending on who, uh, how many people get in the bidding war. And you're looking at a number of years, five, right. six. Yeah, he's young. Because he's a 27 year old or so. I, it's going to be a lot of money. I, you know, the history of pitchers, though, I don't know how you give long term. Well, contracts. it's tough. No one likes to do that. You know, I mean, uh, I think the Indians' policy was no more than two. And it would be an option year. But if right. you're going after guys and you're in a bidding war, you have to drop right. some of your policies sometimes if you want to get a guy like that. Steve's in Lexington, Kentucky. Hi, Steve. Well, I'll say thanks, Howie. I can take the pizza. Yeah, unfortunately, they don't deliver to Lexington, Kentucky. Great show. Tonight? Yeah, there's nothing else on. Question. <laughs> Rick, I see three major problems with the Indians next year. Second base, left field, and as like you said, a starting pitcher. If you were John Hart, Considering our free the free agency and our farm system, which area would you dedicate the majority of your attention to? Mine would be pitching. And I'll tell you, the reason why you're saying left field and second base is because right now they do not have a proven uh, person in that slot. I think right now Brian Giles, given the opportunity, can go out there and play a good left field, and I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. Can he hit lefties? Yes, he can. He hit 350 last year. He hangs in well, but... As an insurance policy, if they can get another guy, a right-handed bat, that can play left field uh, against left-handers, and, and then Giles can go and play right and give Manny some time off right. as well, so you're really utilizing four outfielders as compared to three as they have in the past. Right. I think now is a time that Giles has to get an opportunity, and I think he will surprise you. What happened? Jim Tomey needed an opportunity to play. Once he gets the at-bats and, and, and the time up, he's, he's putting up big numbers. Same way with Albert Bell when they got rid of Joe Carter. I think now is Brian Giles' chance. If they go out and sign a guy like uh, Moises Alou, give him $5 million, he's just an average player, I think Giles can put up the similar, same kind of numbers, or very similar once he starts getting at bats. Second base, you got a guy in the minor leagues called Enrique Wilson. But you may not want to go with him, but he can play second base as good as Vizcaino did, only he's got better range, and I think offensively he can be just as good as a hitter as he can. And you've got to find out about your own players sooner or later. All right, let's uh, come on back. We'll continue on this uh, discussion with Rick Manning after this break, live on Sports Channel. Let's get back to more Sports Channel and Les Levine. All right, Half, we're, in, we're into our uh, last, last segment with Rick. We still got the big one going, the no-no. He's not saying a word. Come on, big boy, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, my closer is how come quickies. And, and you know, you <laughs> yeah, never. He always loses it. Yeah, my, my, closer had, my, my, my closer had a worse year than Mesa did, uh, that's <laughs> for sure. Hey, with uh, the big holidays coming up, you need to have your carpets uh, clean. And Sutton Hard will, uh, will uh, rent uh, everything you need to give your carpeting and upholstery a professional look. Sutton Hardware rents everything from drain cle uh, cleaning equipment to floor sanders and polishers to heaters and generators. Sutton Hardware uh, offers affordable overnight and daily prices, and they're conveniently located downtown on St. Clair. You can pick up the rental on your way home, return it to work uh, the very next day. Sutton Hardware uh, at uh, 22nd and St. Clair. You can call them at 363-5200 or stop by any day of the week. Rick Manning is with us. Rick, let's take some more calls. Let's go to Dave in Cleveland. Hi, Dave. Fantastic show, Les. Tonight? Uh, every night except for yesterday. Okay. Put me to sleep. What's up? I just want to say, hey, Rick, uh, this is Dave Green from the clubhouse. Uh, from the clubhouse. 
Hey, David, what's happening? Uh, not much. Uh, I know you have a lot of pool and stuff. Uh, could could you do me a favor? Yeah. Could you guys tell me uh, tell the people in the front office that the season's over and I'd like to go home right now? <laughs> what are you doing in the clubhouse? I'm still asleep. <laughs> <laughs> you working over at the door? You keeping uh, everybody out? Absolutely. No, actually, I'm, uh, I can't wait till the season to start. I uh, can't miss, miss Rick and everybody else and uh, John Saunders. I just can't, really can't wait to get back. Do you have some good clubhouse stories that we don't know about? Uh, no comment. Yeah, but don't, there you go, David. That a <laughs> no boy. <comment. laughs> Nobody's talking during our perfect game here. Thanks, Dave. Let's go down to Alliance for Greg. Hi, Greg. How you doing, Les? Good. How are you? Great show. Tonight? Tonight and a little bit last night. Okay. How you doing, Rick? I'm fine, thank you. I want to ask uh, you a question about the, uh, well, you and Les's opinion on about the wristband how you got to get a wristband, and they pick out your number, uh, when is it, a couple months now, from now, or a week? No, they Saturday. Saturday. Sat oh, Saturday. Tickets go on yeah. sale Saturday. And about the uh, pitching for the Indians, who would you like to see come to the Indians to be our starting pitcher? I've heard of a good starting pitcher named Santa Claus. Is he left-handed? <laughs> <laughs> Can he throw a breaking ball for strikes? Unfortunately, his best month is December, and there's no game <laughs> scheduled there. Rick's in Canton. Hi, Rick. Hey, great show, Les. Thank you, sir. I want to ask Rick. You know, I think uh, Mike Hargrove's a great manager, but uh, what do you do? You think he's ever farted in the? Let's go to uh, Casey and Willoughby. Hi, Casey. Greetings, gentlemen. How are you? Very well. A question for the outfielder there. Yes, sir. The way Comiskey Park is structured, right and left field are 23 feet further than that of the Jake. Uh, the way Albert plays defense and uh, his home run power, do you see them bringing the fences in? <laughs> I'm I sure he hopes so. I, you know, um, Chicago, the ball can carry very well out of that ballpark, as it, it does in Jacobs Field. But I think the right center field has a, uh, a jet stream like Jacobs Field does, but nothing carries like Camden Yards in Baltimore. Um, he will struggle a little bit more, I think, uh, defensively in Comiskey Park, um, but he doesn't have the 17-foot monster that he was used to here um, at Jacobs Field. But you know what? It doesn't matter. If he gets a hold of the ball, he can hit it out any part. I'm not so sure that that 17 or 19 foot wall took, took many home runs away from Albert Bell. It'll take, I mean, he, I mean his home runs were home runs. Yeah, exactly. You know, How many, uh, there were a lot of times he hit line drives right off the wall right. or singles, but I mean, that happens in Fenway Park no matter where yeah. you go. And as far as moving the fence in, I can't recall no, that won't. many flies that he, when he gets all, all of it, it's going. It, he, he never had warning track. Power. I remember old Comiskey, the, the straightaway center was 445. Yeah. That's when we used to have to play it. You catch Rick, a ball out on the warning track there, you needed a cab to get in. Rick, how would you like to see Jeff King play in second base for the Indians? Uh, I would like to see that. That would, be, uh, that would be fine. Depending on who they have to give up, I think this guy, uh, he, offensively, he's a power hitter. He did play second base one year when they moved him around. He played third, second, and first. Um, it would be a nice uh, addition, I think, to the Indians. Thanks for the call. Dave's in Bellevue. Hi, Dave. Hi, gentlemen. Hello, Dave. I got a, uh, what kind of role do you think Brian Anderson is going to play next year, or is he still a year away yet? My opinion is if they get a starting pitcher, he is going to have an opportunity to make this team. I don't think it will be in a starting capacity, but it may be out of the bullpen. Um, if they don't get one, he'll be fighting maybe for a, a number five spot on this team. He may be a year away. I think last year taught him a lot as far as the to learn how to pitch at the big league level. Rick, you ever look, wonder what happen, ever happened to an old teammate? If you're looking for them, they got lost somewhere. <laughs> I got a number to call. Do you for old Info teammates? Info data. Oh boy. Info data five one. You're in Cleveland, so five one four fourteen hundred is the number. Okay. If you're out of town, you can call one eight hundred seven five zero two one zero one. You ever wonder what happened to any of these no, stiffs because, you played with? No, because anytime uh, they need something, they find us, whether it be money or whatever. They have, <laughs> they have a way of uh, you, you had a lot of old friends that you didn't know about the World Series time. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> anytime you go across the country, you find them. Hey, half somebody said if you're looking for an old relative, you should call Kinfo Data. Good. Anyway, this is Info Data. In uh, most cases, they'll get results in less than 24 hours. If you're looking for an old teammate, an old roommate, a, an army buddy, uh, an old girlfriend, whatever, they'll locate anybody in the USA. If you've ever wondered about anybody in your past, you can call Info Data 1 uh, 1-800-750-2101 or in Cleveland 514-1400. Now, Rick, I'm taking a chance that Phone Boy Dennis is correct on this. Okay. Uh, who are we speaking to here? Hello? Left. Yes. Hey, this is an old teammate of Rick's. In fact, uh, with the Milwaukee Brewers, when I came up, Rick actually gave me my first pair of spikes. 
And even though they didn't fit me, I still wore them just because I was scared to turn them in. Now, hold on. Before I just we go on, is this Rick, really, is hey, this who he claims to be? How, how do you hit a knuckleball, Rick? Hey, Candyman, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing in town? <laughs> this can't no, be Tom kidding. Candiotti. How you doing? It's good to see you. Now, well, hold on. Hey, I wish I could see you. Will you verify that it's him? It is him. Phone boy Dennis did not screw us no, up this No, because I'll tell you what. He'll tell you the story how he got thrown the knuckleball. And he, he got yelled at. From <laughs> what, Who was the manager? That's true. That was a great story there. It's, uh, it's a great when story. I was a spring well, let's, tra- let's hear it, Tom. Yeah, it was a spring training in 19, uh, geez, what's it, 84. 84? Yes. And uh, we're having an inter-squad game. I just came back from Puerto Rico. Yep. And, so far, uh, hold on one second. So far, he has passed his lie detector this test. Is this is it. Really this Tom is Candy. Yes, it is. No doubt about it. And we're playing air squad game, and uh, Renee Latchin was manager. And so he was he was umpiring the game. And uh, Rick's up to bat, and, of course, Rick had a great knuckleball, and I was always messing with the knuckleball, so I decided to throw him one during the game. <laughs> and Latchin was behind the plate, and he takes his mask off. He walks out, and he goes, hey, what the heck are you doing out here? Is this this joke out here? He yelled said, at Latch, him. hey, I tried to throw a knuckleball. And he got all over me, and I can't even, Rick had the biggest smile on his face. I, it, it was hilarious. And he ends up b- becoming a knuckleball pitcher, still pitching in the big leagues, right. and Latchman didn't want him to throw it. Unbelievable. It's the first day of spring training. Well, how fast was your real fastball, Tom? Um, I don't know if I can break 78 anymore. Now, how about then? <laughs> you don't well, have to in this. See, I might have I got 80 on a good day, a little wind behind me. <laughs> hey, yeah, I, but you know something? You don't have to throw 80, and you can get people out. Hey, hey Tom, how long are you in town? Uh, just till this weekend, Les, and then I'm going back to California. To see Teddy? Uh, actually, Teddy's uh, he's all wrapped up the 49ers still till uh, what, January I think, 1st? Yeah, right. So, uh, But uh, I know he's happy. You're real anxious about coming back here. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I wish I could see you. You're in the other league. I never get to see you anymore. They, they trade all my boys away uh, to the other league. Interleague play coming around. Yeah, so. but that's the West Coast. Yeah. I wish we did have a chance to hey, see Hey, Tom, you. are you going to be before spring training? Are you going to be in town? Because uh, we'd I, love to have you on the show. Yeah, I would love to come back here, but uh, no, we can't kind of, pay you to come back. It's kind of hard to run back here, Les. It's a little cold out here. <laughs> Matter of fact, Les will send his private jet to pick you up. Yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna fly it. Uh, okay, if you're gonna fly it, I'll get on it for sure. <laughs> hey, hey, Tom, I'm I'm gonna put you on hold. If you if you don't mind, if you give uh, phone boy Dennis a Len, number where we can reach Len, you, okay? Not at all. Yeah. Hey. Before we put Tom through on the line, yeah, he asked Dennis if he could be on the show tomorrow night. Seriously? Yeah. Come on in tomorrow night. You want me to come down to your show tomorrow night? Absolutely. What am I going to get? You're going to get the same thing Rick's getting, a gift certificate for Hugo Boss. You, however, are leaving this weekend, and you won't have time to use it. Jeez, what a deal. I'll be there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, are you going to come in tomorrow night? Yeah, I'll come on That's down. That's great. I'm going to put you on hold. Dennis will give you the information how to get here. The sheriff. Right. The be sheriff. Great. That'll be great. Tom Candy. That's a hard act to follow there. Yeah, I got to see you, Candy Man, one of these days. All right. Thanks, All right, man. Take care. Well, now, tomorrow you can watch the show and watch him. Yes. You know what? If I'm not doing that, I make something Come on back. Come on. Okay. Uh, Rick, you got to give some... It's time for How Come Quickies. We got Rick here to, to close out. In fact... Uh, we'll have uh, Ernie Witt hit a fly ball to him. He'll do the last How Come Quickie. He'll ask the caller, and maybe we can close out a perfect show tonight. We can only hope. You know, Rick, we asked you seven I months. I book guests. I was going to say, we asked Rick seven months ago to come on. Candiotti calls, and we say, yeah, I could be here tomorrow. <laughs> Give me a How Come Quickie. Yeah, how come the Indians have to play teams like Pittsburgh and Cincinnati in interleague play next season? Give me a How Come Quickie. Hello? Yes, give me a Quickie. Yeah, how come you always cut off your good guest? Give me a how come quickie. Yeah, how come you're so cross-eyed you dropped a dime and picked up? A... Give me a how come quickie. Uh, how come you, you didn't help my wife pick out a good soup for Thanksgiving last week? Uh, Manning just went deep into the gap to bring down a long fly ball. Give me a how come quickie. Yeah, how come uh, New Year's Eve falls on December 31st this year? Give me a how come quickie. Hey, handsome, how come Monica Sellis' email address doesn't have a backslash? Give me a how come quickie. Yeah, how come? Give me a how come quickie. Yeah, Les, how come no matter how hard I looked, I couldn't find my old girlfriend until I got lucky when I called Nympho Data? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
like this every night, Arch. Oh, boy. <laughs> Give me a how come quickie. How come I can't call on the show and uh, get on the next day? If somebody called with a how come quickie one night and want to know if Archie Manning's ever been called Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Give me a how come quickie. How come the circus is mad because you took away their clown to do the show last night? Give me a how come quickie. Yeah, how come they call you Archie? Go ahead. They call me Archie because Archie Manning, the football player. You mean Peyton's father? Yes. No, that's my son. <laughs> Give me a how come quickie. How come in typical down-the-dial form, the Food Channel stole Les, uh, Les Levine idea and is doing how come cookies? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, that's a great play in the hole by Vizquel to save that one. Give me a how come quickie. Yeah, how come you have a wooden leg? Give me a how come quickie. How come the scars of Galler <laughs> Give me a how come quickie. Yeah, how come the Cavs didn't go after Shaquille O'Neal? Yeah, we're sort of waiting. Half we're waiting for the official score to make his decision on some of these. Give me a quickie. Go ahead. How come you don't have Robert Abui on the show? See another Baba Abui call. These uh, people who listen to uh, Howard Stern, uh -huh. uh, they don't realize I'm as big a Howard Stern fan as there is in the in the city, and they think they're really getting me getting back at me by getting their names out on the show. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you send the tape to Howard, telling you heard it on more sports channel than Les Levine every night from 10 to 11, I'm starting to get ticked off. You're, using, you're putting those names on every night, and you never tell Howard. What's the use of doing it if you're not going to tell him? Give me a quickie. Go ahead. How come Hef is always hanging from the ceiling? Hef? No comment. Give me a how come quickie. Uh, <clears throat> well, that's how come Leon Lett not qualifies to play for the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> Maybe <Maddie> going back. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a how come quickie. How come on the real Les Levine? Wink, wink. Give me a how come quickie. How come you're so sexy? Give me a which one was he? Who was he talking to? Give me a quickie. Go ahead. Yeah, how you been? Give me a how come quickie. How come offensive guru Steve Crosby is still out of work? Give me a how come quickie. How come it couldn't be Baltimore's Memorial Stadium that caught on fire? <laughs> Give me a how come quickie. How come Albert Bell didn't change his name to Pat O'Connor? Give me a how come quickie. How come your CSU's number one jinx when you do their games, you bum? Give me a quickie. Go ahead. How come most of today's outfielders don't play with half the hustle Rick Manning does? Good question. Give me a how come quickie. How come nobody's talking about playing Matt Williams in the left field? Oh. <laughs> All right, close this out. Tell him. How come there hasn't been a, a perfect game since I retired? There you, there you go. We had a perfect show tonight. There you go. Uh, well, I guess Tom Candiotti will join us as <laughs> <laughs> Hal Lovovitz and maybe Rick Manning. I'm going to try. Thanks, Hal. Thanks to everybody. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent. <laughs>